Hello Zany friends, I wanted to bring you a little bit of an update on what is going on currently with the channel. Uh, so I don't know if you've noticed, but there has been some, uh, you know, audio only postings that have been going up every Monday night. Those are basically from our new podcast called Elated Geek. And that's something that me and Marshall are doing. We have it on different podcasting platforms now, but basically it's all about like geek life, books, things to watch, comics, video games, uh, travel, etc. So that is going on currently right now and we will be posting that to this channel on Monday nights. However, there is another change coming and it's one that I've kind of been working towards and that is uh, sewing, but more specifically historical costuming, cosplay, and plus size clothes. So all of those things are things that I am going to be taking a journey on through 2021 and I hope you will join me. If you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen that I have been posting a few of these projects already on there and I will continue to but if you're looking for more of an in-depth on uh, my projects going forward then this is the place to be. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the projects that I have been working on so far that have kind of helped with my skill level as far as uh, getting to the point of doing plus size clothes. So the first thing I wanted to uh, talk to you about was my first project, which is a Christmas tree skirt. It is reversible. You uh, And here's the picture right here. Uh, for our Christmas tree, I should probably say it's more of a seasonal tree. We keep it up year round and we theme it for different geeky things. So right now we are doing a Harry Potter one. So I made a Christmas tree skirt that was reversible with Harry Potter fabric on one side and Star Wars fabric on the other side. I got this particular pattern from a uh, peekaboo pattern shop and I will link it down below. Um, what I do have to say about this project is that it was fairly time consuming cutting everything out because it ended up being like 32 panels of, of things uh, for both sides. Um, I had ended up even though it gave me a very skinny panel, I ended up doubling the panel so that I would have less to cut out and like bigger pieces. But this one was a really interesting thing to kind of start off with when it comes to like patterns and uh, how to put things together and just like finishing the edges. So that was a really good start for me. I should also preface this by saying that I have sewing experience. I made bags and like pouches and and lots of like stockings and, and things like that but th I'm really not that good at advanced sewing. I have a lot to learn from my skills so that's part of why I'm doing all of this. My second project which is kind of in preparation for all of this is my dress form um, and her name is Dorothy and you're gonna see her right here. Uh, she was named by my husband and some people on Instagram who also suggested this name and I think it's totally appropriate. Dorothy is a bootstrap dress form um, you are able to go onto the site, put in your measurements, download it, and then they will give you the pattern that you can make for your own bootstrap dress form. Now, normally in the pattern, uh, the inside of it is going to be just full of fiber fill and like a pole and a stand that you can get from, you know, Amazon or whatever. And it tells you that in the instructions where to get it. However, I decided because I was watching, I believe it was Pocket Full of Posies, YouTube channel. She made one as well and she had just put it over an existing dress form and then filled it in around it. And I thought, well, that's kind of a cool idea because as I'm as I am losing weight right now, um I will be probably needing to do another one of these dress forms later on. Uh, my parents actually got me a dress form for Christmas this year. So that's what's the inside of it is, as well as the stand. It is adjustable. So I got it up to my 5'3 height, which, you know, I'm a little short. That is going to help a lot. And I will say that the hardest part for me because of how to sew was number one, it doesn't come with a seam allowance in the pattern. So I really had to learn how to put in the seam allowance for a pattern that doesn't already give it to you. I very much learned uh, that you should always put your interfacing on your fabric first before you cut it out. <laughs> That's probably a really good idea. And then lastly, I had a lot of issues with uh, the arm parts. They have like a cardboard inside and it's like you've got 
fabric on either side of the cardboard, okay? So it was very hard to put that in, very challenging, but I was able to work with my hand sewing in that capacity. Technically they said you could do it on the machine, but I just decided to practice my hand sewing. So that's all I did there. I'm not 100% happy with this, um, but I think it's going to do for what I am trying to do going forward until I lose more weight and have to do a new dress form. My third project is uh, a sewing kit and uh, this sewing kit is by Madame Sew. Uh, it, as you can see it has it's like a rolling kit and it has like an elastic, uh, it, well it's supposed to have an elastic clo closure and I'll talk more about that later, but it has a little zipper pocket and some pockets for your other things. And it also has a place for put needles and pins and whatnot. Uh, so what happened was there are two things about this that I'm not exactly happy about. The first one is the elastic because when I did sew the elastic in and I used it and put it over the button for the first time, it completely pulled out. So what I ended up doing was removing the elastic and taking a piece of ribbon and just hand sewing that in uh, to be looped around the button. And that seems to work okay. The other thing is the binding um, and I've had this issue when I make quilts before because I'm just lazy and uh, so I will machine sew both sides of the binding so if you know how to do the binding you basically like sew one edge to it fold it over and tuck it under and then sew again but the problem with that is when you're sewing on the other side you can see your stitches through and so I needed to and this is my note for next time learn how to hand sew the binding on the other side, which I know how to whip stitch. <laughs> it's not really that big of a, an issue, but uh, it's just something that I need to remember for next time to do. So this is definitely, that was a learning project for me, but I think um, it's starting to open my eyes to another way of doing like this, what we call a sewing kit or a husef, uh, which I will want to learn how to do later. I'm just kind of waiting for, uh, a couple other projects to be done first. And then uh, my next project after that, I made soup bowl cozies. I, this picture is not the best picture that I've taken of them, but basically last year in Owl Crate, I got a soup bowl cozy. It's literally like a pot holder that has been taken in on all four sides so that it comes up like a bowl. And then you put it around your bowl, you know, when your bowl is hot from the microwave or whatever. Now, one of the things that I have been doing lately is I just eat soup for lunch every day. It's very easy to make and actually it's one of the reasons why I'm losing weight is because that's what I have every day for lunch. And I only had one of these soup bowl hoses and I needed more so I made it. My problem with this is that my measurements weren't exactly right for some reason and even though I went back and looked at the pattern and I had followed the pattern exactly how it said, uh, there was something wrong with the measurements on one of the sides and I'm not exactly sure why. Um, so I had to kind of fudge it around a little bit. So you can't really tell on this, but there is a part where it looks like it's pulling a little bit. I don't really care. This is only for my purposes and my husband is like overjoyed with the fact that we have more now. So I don't really care, <laughs> but um, yeah, it was definitely like more of a learning for me to really like look at uh, what my measurements were going to be and how it might work. All right, so that is everything that I have actually made. Let me talk to you about what I'm going to make next. So my next project is going to be this cashmere skirt and I already have the pattern for it. They do come in plus sizes, but the one problem is I'm still going to have to do some adjustments. So this is going to be not only learning how to make a skirt, with a waistband, but also making adjustments to make something bigger than the pattern that I already have. So that is a very, very big learning curve for me right now. So I'm excited to start that as well. I am not sure if I'm going to make the bodice yet. I might make the bodice and it might be like a full dress or it might just be the skirt. I haven't really decided yet. What I may do is just like kind of cut out the skirt and see where I'm at and then go for the bodice after that. Uh, regardless of the fact, I am really excited to use this pattern because this company is really inclusive of its sizing and so I am super excited about that. And then just kind of looking forward a little bit more, uh, my first real cosplay historical project is going to be a Regency outfit. So I'm going to start 
with the chemise and then make a petticoat that's going to be a full body petticoat. Then I am going to make a long Regency corset and then the dress. And then after that, we'll see where, where we go. Um, I have tons and tons of ideas for different historical costuming to make over the years. So I, I think because a lot of this is going to propel me towards making a, you know, a boned corset at some point, um, I am slowly trying to pick up the skills to do that. And I hope you'll join me on this journey. Like, honestly, I, I feel really excited about this. I've been doing research about this for like at least six or seven months. And I've been watching a lot of people, um, uh, but I feel like, while I can find some plus size historical customers out there, even they aren't as plus size as I am. So I'm, I'm hoping that this whole journey will basically like really help those of you who have been wanting to be, you know, doing cosplay, but you know, can't really find anything in your size. I really hope this will inspire you and help you do these kinds of projects as well. Like just, just hop in there and try to figure it out as you go. I'm not gonna be perfect. Even though I'm kind of a, a perfectionist when I look at my stuff and I'm like, eee, that pull right there, I don't like it. But you know what? I'm learning each and every project I do. So um, I hope that you will come along with me and take this journey with me. And I, I'm really kind of excited about it too. I don't know how much I'm going to be posting the sewing videos because I feel like I'm not going to push myself really hard. I'm really going to take my time with all of this. So hopefully uh, it will be at least two or three videos a month I'm hoping so uh yeah hope hopefully you are are really like excited and comment down below if you are uh, so I cannot wait to take this journey with you uh, so thank you so much for watching and until next time stay zany